Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. All right, Executioner. I think we're close to our destination. Our quest to complete the Way of the Nine. Uh-oh. All right, let's get down on the level ground. It looks like we've got a... Some sort of cat. Uh-oh. And I've got the wrong spell. Surrounded. You are vanquished. All right, good work. I think we can go on foot from here. All right, Atar, my executioner of Stendar, we're here at the behest of We've Knight stopped. Paladin Cyrus on a quest to teach me humility, among other things. I've disgraced myself. I'm here to help. Causing the death of Vigilant Tyrannus at supposedly the hands what of Molag Bal, although it were really my hands, even though we were manipulated. We've stopped. What is because it? of my cavorting with the Daedra, my paladin armor has been taken away, and I'm now just a regular member of the Vigilant. I'm here to and help. And I must earn the right to wear the Paladin armor again. So here we are. Let's continue our quest. Hey! So, this Way of the Nine... Not sure what to expect here. Get ready for a fight. Uh oh. Ice wraith, it would seem. And I scoffed. There was some poison. I might still have it. Wait, there's more. Investigate rumors. I hear the strange noise. Wait, there's someone running. Do they mean us harm? Stand ready. No, oh, they're under attack. This should be good. Drink the blood and become my son. All right. We have a mage coming this way. And so the pack was born again. Who is it? The singing. Is it that same woman that we dismissed and saved, sort of? What was that? Last I knew I heard something. A storm master. There's 
no way I can just go ahead first. Look any tire yet. Stendar take you. Take you. There. The power that he possessed took every bit of our might to vanquish him. Walk always in the light, mage, or we will drag you to it. A citrine staff, a thunderbolt that does 115 points of shock damage to health and half that to magicka. All right, Crimson Fragment. Potions are 25% more powerful. I'll take the gold, a rainbow piece, a sapphire staff, blue lightning that does 40 points of shock damage to health, absorb 20 points of magicka from the target, decrease the target's magicka regeneration by 100% for 10 seconds. We were certainly up against a very formidable foe. Brutish Bolt, Blue Lightning that does 99% damage. Points of shock damage to health. The target will not be able to use the magic for 15 seconds. It's a good thing I was using my mace, but I was able to maintain my ward. Plasma Ball, a plasma ball that does 132 points of shock damage per second to health and magicka. Disintegrates targets if they're health is low, under 35%. And we have here a staff of lightning wave. A lightning wave that does 65 points of shock damage per second to health and magic up. Staff of the storm. Target takes 60 points of shock damage per second to health and half that to magic up. Tourmaline. Increases shock resistance by 30%. Shock spells do 50% more damage. Oh. It's a miracle we survive this. Praise Stendar. Let me pray. Stendar, thank you for getting us through this ordeal. And let me meditate. reached a level of 90 in my restoration after visiting Danica one final time. She taught me everything she knew. I'm now a master in restoration. flame, where the warrior's flame lasts twice as long. All right, that'll be 
be it for now. Thank you, Stendar, for your blessing. All right. I think we are done here. Let's just, uh... Collect what we can. If we can find that person that was singing, we should do so. I suspect it's the same woman that we encountered before. Sky Shard, it's a good thing I did come down here. Dearest Finn, I am keeping this series of journals as you recommended, so that these pages will serve as memories when my own mind fails. Already, what was once a great atlas of experiences, thoughts, and recollections is now nothing but a white sheet, an empty canvas. Yet the fear still exists that I may misplace these journals. Or forget your sage advice altogether. In time, I fear I will cease to remember my own name. Thankfully, my more immediate concerns allow me a moment of respite from the worries of tomorrow. As I attempt to cross the Gerald Mountains, I now understand why you countenanced your dread when I told you of my plans. However, it is not the ogres or the ice wraiths that claim the most lives here. It is the hunger and the cold. Yesterday I found a camp just off the main trail. A young woman was seated by a pile of wood dressed in a black linen robe. Her body shivered awkwardly and she greeted me through a chatter of teeth. Jocelyn was her name, and she was having trouble lighting the fire. She claimed to be well-versed in destruction magic, which was not surprising, given her garb. In fact, she was able to handle all but the most rudimentary of spells, flames. When she said the word, I couldn't help but notice a deep sadness in her eyes, as if her mind had recalled some long-forgotten regret. At such times, I am almost thankful that my own memory fails me. Her eyes shone with a similar melancholy when I asked her if she had studied at the college. She only nodded her head to make conversation. I also inquired who was teaching restoration there, knowing full well I wouldn't remember the name. Fortunately, this journal may prove more resilient than I. A niece, she said. She studied under a woman named Anise. Hmm. And this is from Lathgwen. I think we'll take this. That name, Anise, sounds familiar. Did we get this pelt? No. What do we have here? Gold. Yes, let's let's mine. Can I it. help you? I'm still here. Let's get going. working. I'm not getting any ore. Alright, well, hopefully the Sky Shard will activate. There we are. Alright, let me take these wolf pelts. Hmm, an 
old key. This chest is filled with them. I wonder what it's for. Alright, let me try this gold vein one more time. There we go. Alright, if at first you don't succeed, as they say. That was quite exciting. I'm certainly uh, being challenged to the full extent of my abilities here. Could Cyrus have known? And who was this? A bandit? All right. That's the storm master that we defeated. And here, is this the person that was singing? Yes. Ah, greetings, fellow traveler. Greetings. I apologize for my singing. I didn't realize I had an audience. <laughs> There's no I apology sometimes necessary. I myself a bard or a sword singer of legend. Well, that was a beautiful song. It's more ominous than beautiful. Really? But I suppose its melody won't lack for suitors. Maybe not now, but in time. The melody that you sung, it's not as common as some of the other local favorites. No, I imagine it isn't. Few have ever heard it, and even fewer understand what it's about. Some say it's a quiet song of glory, while others will tell you it tells the loudest of tragedies. You see, to be a companion, to be part of the circle, one must give up a piece of their humanity. It was not something I was willing to give. Hmm. So I left my shield brothers and sisters and set out on my own. I figured I needed the time to myself and I've grown weary of saying goodbye. Well, hmm. I would imagine it would be a difficult choice to make. Not at all. The choice was easy. I've always been suspicious of easy power. The only strength that you can truly rely on is the kind that's earned. Have you ever thought of returning to the Companions? I've actually been asked to speak with their leader, and I've never gotten around to it. It is on my list. No. And it has nothing to do with the Circle. That's why I left, but there's a different reason why I won't return. And what is the reason you won't return? When I was a child, I thought of nothing else but joining the fabled Companions. Not out of some desire to be a hero, but because I believed there was no safer place to live than inside the great meat hall of Yavaska. I remember kneeling on the steps, drenched in wet rags, the clouds practically screaming the rain. I must have looked so pitiful, begging Skior to take me in. Yet it wasn't pity he gave me, but scorn. Who do you think we are, girl? He said. Yavaska is not an orphanage. Mm. And he was right. All my life I'd sought the protection of others. When I should have been learning to protect myself. Well, we all need to rely on others. Surely, you have not come this far without help. True. There are many times when I have relied on the strength of others. And each time it has only served to hinder my own development. I once traveled with a companion. You might even call him a friend. For years I would rely on him for food, for warmth, and for someone to talk to. But what if the day came when I couldn't summon his aid? And then what would become of me? No. 
that wasn't going to be my fate. And how did you eventually become a companion? The wolves will recruit any fighter who is strong and virtuous, for there are few in this world who are both. My chance came about seven summers ago, when the city held a tournament to celebrate the birth of the Jarl's son. And what happened at the Jarl's tournament? I was a girl not even flowered, and the crowd behind me laughed and jeered when I requested to enter my name on the archers list. But all went silent when Yul and Greymane vouched for me, and paid for my entrance with a dagger from the Skyforge. Hmm. Why do you think Yorlin vouched for you? From his view atop the Skyforge, he'd seen me grow from a child who could barely knock an arrow, to one who could bullseye a flea. He watched me train outside Javaska day and night, in the chills of winter and the rains of spring, so that I could one day earn my way inside. And on that day, there was not an archer in Whiterun whose aim was more true. Not Aethys or Irileth. Not even Aela the Huntress would best me. Hmm. Well, color me impressed. Besting those three is an impressive feat. I was fortunate. Ayla's a more skillful archer than I, but on that day she was not at her best, and I was never better. So, are you an adventurer now, of some sort? Hardly. In my time with the wolves, I did a lot of small favors. Pest control, muscle jobs, or hunting down petty thieves. As someone who spent half her life in the slums and the other half tracking and hunting forest game, this work came easy. Unfortunately, raiding caves, Dralga crypts, ghost ships, and spider dens are another matter entirely. You seem like you can handle yourself in a fight. True, but there are a certain type of skill set you need to survive as an adventurer. You need to know which mushrooms are food and which ones are poison. You have to learn how to sleep on a bed of rock and with one eye open, and as a hunter, you have to get used to the idea of being prey. The worst part is, you might spend a week in some crypt and have no treasure to show for it. So you also have to learn to handle disappointment. Yet it's not the size of a cave that worries me, but what lives inside it. Particularly the caves marked by the Falmer. Hmm. What marking do you speak of? The Falmer marked the entrance to their caves with a sculpture of painted bones. Ah. Yes, I'm repulsed by I've it. seen those. But I don't think I could venture into a cave if I wasn't sure those things weren't looming beneath. The markings help. Well, you sound like you almost resent companion work. Resent is probably too... strong of a word. My time with the wolves was disappointing, but only because I had a false impression of who they were. What did you think the Companions could do for you? As a child, I thought they could protect me. As a woman, I thought they would groom me. It was naive to think so. Wolves may run in packs, but there's a hierarchy, and a competitive one. Whatever skill or strength I gained, I earned on my own. Why do you fear the Falmer? I grew up in a poor village outside of Whiterun. It was very small, but full of children and as such, full of life. They said when we played in the yard, the peals of laughter rang all the way to Dragon's Reach. Yet, when I think about that village, I can never hear it. I listen for it train my ears toward the darkness, but what comes out isn't laughter. There were screams that night. So many screams. The Falmer took my mother. They took my father. They tried to take me. How did you escape? Before she took me in, my mother used to light a single sconce by my bed to ward off the dark. I remember the way the light wrapped around its face, how it stood there, tracing its mouth with its tongue. I... I'm sorry. 
No more talk about the Falmer. Yes, please, I can see how much this They're is upsetting foul creatures, you. And if I never see another, it will be too soon. All right, why don't we change the subject? Have you found anything of interest here? Nothing. Just the usual trinket surrounded by corpses, blood and bones. The bandit corpse over there is still fresh. Looks like I arrived here before the wolves could desecrate it. Huh. The face on that one looked familiar. I almost thought it was someone I knew. A friend's cousin's uncle or something. What does that make us? Strangers. But even the death of a stranger seems like something worth mourning. Well, you are right. As a vigilant, we should send his soul into the light. You're welcome to. It's not something you want to make a habit out of doing, though. I mean, if I could, I would give them all proper burials. But there isn't enough time in this lifetime and the next. All right, well, I was hoping I could ask you to join me. All right, then. But apparently that's not the case. All right, Attar. Let's continue our journey. She may have made an excellent member of the Vigilant. We've stopped. What is it? Let's see where we're headed next. We need to investigate the rumors of vampire activity in Boulderfall Cave. 